Well, good day everybody. I'm going to talk today about uh, a little aspect of camera making. If you're a tinkerer and like to make homemade pinhole cameras like that, the whole little assembly of them here, one of the most essential uh, parts of building cameras is figuring out of how to mount them to a tripod. For instance, here is a tripod plate for a Bogan tripod. The most essential thing is to figure out how to make a tripod bushing in the bottom of a camera or, in this case, a mounting plate used to support a camera like a pinhole camera. So we're going to look today at how to make tripod bushings. Stay tuned. Well, of course, when you uh, buy a commercially manufactured camera, you're going to get a tripod bushing almost always. Even something as inexpensive as this little Holga 135 plastic camera has a tripod bushing right there on the bottom. And this nice little Minox GTE, a little folding micro size 35 millimeter camera, it has a tripod bushing built into the base of it. But if you're making a camera by yourself, a homemade camera, you may not have a tripod bushing in the camera. The camera might be too thin, for instance, a cardboard box camera. So one of the ways that I've gotten around needing a tripod bushing for really, really small or thin-walled homemade cameras is I use a mounting plate, a scrap of wood, and then I mount a tripod bushing into the base of the wood. I usually put some cup hooks and some elastic bands, and then it allows you to uh, attach the camera that otherwise wouldn't be attachable. You can attach it with elastic bands or bungee cords to your plate and then the plate mounts to the tripod adapter for the tripod head. That's how I've done a lot of homemade pinhole cameras over the years, how I've mounted them. And I have a wide variety of these mounting plates. Let's see, here is one that's a scrap of some kind of uh, countertop material. It's like MDF with laminate, and I have a crude tripod bushing in the bottom. I got some screw eyes with a bungee cord for securing a camera. This plate is a piece of MDF, and it has a tripod bushing in the middle and then two on either side for putting two different cameras side by side. I think that was for a pair of video cameras that I was using. This is a scrap of construction grade plywood and I've uh, crudely uh, rigged a tripod bushing in the middle of it for putting a larger box camera. Here is a even bigger uh, plate. This is a piece of uh, laminate flooring and uh, I've uh, managed to epoxy a tripod bushing into the base of it for mounting larger cameras onto tripods. Now you may not always uh, want to use the plate method. Sometimes uh, you can build the tripod bushing into the bottom of the camera if you have enough thickness in the bottom of the camera. So for instance, this pinhole camera, the walls in the top and the lid and everything are made from black foam core board, hot glue gun and gaffers tape, little shutter like that that rotates. But the bottom of the camera is a piece of oak plywood. And I have a tripod bushing built into the bottom of this camera, so it already has one built in. But other cameras like this uh, gift box, Christmas gift box pinhole camera, uh, don't have, uh, it's just thin cardboard, so you're going to need something like a plate, a mounting plate to set it on with elastic bands. And let's see, my biggest pinhole camera that I brought out is my 8x10 pinhole camera. This is the one that I used up on a delicate arch in Arches National Park in Utah. This is a storage slot pinhole camera. The film plane is here. There's a storage slot for exposed and unexposed paper. You stick this in a changing bag on your lap to change it out, but it has a piece of oak wood on the bottom glued onto it and actually screwed onto the oak from the inside of the camera. But there is a tripod bushing built onto that box. So it is nice to have tripod bushings built onto your camera, but you don't always have the ability to do it. But regardless, I'm going to show you guys how to install tripod bushings. Uh, so the essential item that you're going to need is a T-nut. And T-nuts come in various styles. Let me show you the one here. This one is about a half inch deep and it has three sharp metal prongs on the T-nut designed to cut into the wood. Uh, I don't recommend those because uh, usually when the prongs cut into your wood, depending on how soft the wood is, it's going to split the wood. It's kind of a crude way of doing things. And so I prefer to use the T-nuts that have a little mounting flange on them with screw holes. So there is a rectangular one on your right and there's a circular one 
on the left that is rolling around on my little surface, but they have little, th this one has three little holes, mounting holes for mounting the T-nut, and as you can tell, they come in different lengths depending on how, how thick your wood is. So you go to the hardware store and you're going to want to select a T-nut that matches appropriate for the thickness of wood you're mounting it into. Now there are also these uh, threaded inserts. It has a quarter twenty uh, thread on the inside and has a coarse wood thread on the outside. Now if you wanted to use one of these threaded inserts instead of a T-nut, I would recommend, of course, using a stainless steel one instead of the brass. And this one, for the quarter twenty, the diameter of the inner shank of the T-nut is, I believe, 9 30 seconds. So you'd want to use a 9 30 seconds drill bit to drill out for the center part of it and then thread it in. But even so, given how coarse the um, threads are, uh, this is not going to easily thread into a real hard wood, and so that's one of the reasons why I like to use the T-nuts better. And I like the ones with the round flange that have the three mounting holes, so you can get them in different uh, lengths. Okay, so on the way out to the garage, I decided I needed to go to the hardware store to get a few more doodads for our project. And on the way back, I wanted to get a different kind of coffee bean for my AeroPress, so one of the essential parts about doing this project is you've got to have coffee, so I'm going to make some coffee. Mmm, Sprouts Blend. Okay, let's go to the garage and start working on our project. So I've decided that I'm going to use this little block of poplar. This is uh, an inch and a half by three quarters. So I'm going to use this and make this a small little mounting plate for tiny little cameras. And what I did when I went to the hardware store, so I got two different size T-nuts. This is a half inch, this is a roughly three quarter inch, and then I got a bunch of these little number two uh, by quarter inch long steel wood screws. And those are to screw down the flange of the T-nut in the hole that we make. So what we have to do is figure out what the proper length is, which one of these two we're going to use. So you want the end of the T-nut to be flush with the top of the block. And that determines how deep of a countersink you're going to have to make with that large hole. And so lining these up here, here is the block of wood, here's my T-nut, this is the three-quarter inch T-nut, and I want to have enough extra room so that when I put one of these screws, the screw head won't protrude above the, the back of the plate. This surface back here is where the camera is going to be sitting on. So it looks like I'll be able to use this long T-nut and still use these tiny screws in it and it'll still be below the surface of the wood. And the reason why that makes it handy is because I actually don't need to countersink the hole, the deep hole, very far. It's going to be just about whatever the, the height there is. That's as far down as the Forstner bit needs to go. So that's going to make the block stronger. If I had decided to use the short T-nut, then I would have to countersink that large hole pretty deeply, and that's going to make a weak spot in the wood. Now, you could choose to drill these holes with a hand drill. I've done so in the past, but I'm actually going to be using an inexpensive Harbor Freight Tools tabletop drill press. Uh, this is pretty reasonably priced. First we're going to start with a 16th inch drill bit as a, for a pilot hole. Then we're going to go with a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit. And this bit is going to cut our shallow wide hole for the flange of the T-nut. And then finally for the main shank of the T-nut we're going to be using a 5 16 inch drill bit. I mark the center of the block with two diagonals for drilling my pilot hole. More coffee is needed, of course. There's our pilot hole. I need to drill that countersunk hole a quarter inch into the wood. Okay, so this is the touching point to the surface of the wood, and I want to set the depth uh, on this uh, drill press to only allow it to go another quarter of an inch beyond there. And that's going to give me my quarter inch uh, recess on that hole. 
And then I can verify with a little mark at the quarter inch point down below the surface, I can verify that the, the tooth of the drill bit doesn't go any further than that. And of course I can measure the depth of my hole with my little calipers to verify that it is a quarter inch. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to drill my interior 5 16 inch hole. Here's my pilot hole in the middle there. I'm going to drill part way through and then I'm going to go flip it around and drill the other way through from the other side with a pilot hole. And the reason why is if I just drill through all the way from one way, it's going to splinter and blow out the uh, wood on the other side. So the idea is to do it from both sides and meet in the middle so it would be a nice neat hole. 5 16 inch drill bit, which is the closest that I can get to the diameter of the shank on this T-nut. Here is our finished holes, other than the mounting holes. So this fits down in there like that, and it's actually poking slightly above the surface. We went a little too far in there, a little bit more than the quarter inch we needed, so I'm going to actually shim underneath the flange of that. And then I'm going to have to drill the three holes for the tiny little steel screws to secure that in there. And I'm going to mark the positions of the three little pilot holes. So when I'm checking out the diameter of my smallest drill bit is a sixteenth and I'm ex examining the threads of the uh, these number two screws. So I'm going to use a scrap of wood just to test out to see whether this uh, screw, this pilot hole will actually work in a, in a scrap of wood. Yeah, I think we can use a sixteenth of an inch. That'll work good. All right, let's do it. All right, so I finished screwing down those little tiny screws in there, and it looks like I'm pretty darn flush with my uh, bottom surface of the tripod base where my adapter plate will mount to like that nice and secure <clears throat> nice and tight I think I am going to probably reinforce the connection though with some epoxy and a little bit of two-part Loctite epoxy I use an old business card and one of these short little bamboo food skewers I'm just going to line the periphery of the hole, trying to stay below the surface of the wood. That looks pretty good right there. We're just going to let it dry. And I always keep my little mixing stick on the glue so I can tell when it's cured. Okay, one other little touch I did is I had bought a package of these little cup hooks. And they have a little flange on them. And so I drilled a 16th inch pilot hole, but I also mixed up a little bit more epoxy and I epoxied uh, the flange to the wood. So I have the cup hooks on both sides. So with the, this is the bottom of the tripod base, this will be the top. You want the hook pointing down so you can snag either a rubber band or a bungee cord around it. So now with those glued up, we're going to let them cure and then I'm, we're going to decide what to cover the top of the, of the plate with. Well, so I've let it, uh, the glue cure for an hour or two. So what I want to do is I want to uh, cover the top with some kind of material to make it a little bit nicer to put a camera on. I have several different options. One of the options is I have this adhesive black craft foam and you peel off the thing and stick it on there, but I only have this piece left. It's not really enough to do the job and I don't want to really go to the hobby shop the craft store. I have this craft felt that is adhesive and I have plenty of it and that would work fine. It would look nice and black and then I have an older piece, uh, the last of this adhesive felt that's green colored so I'm going to have to decide whether to do the green or the black. I might do the green just to just to change it up a little bit. Make sure we are on the right, the correct side. Well, there it is, our little tripod mounting block. 
So this is one way you can use the little block is doing something like one of these pipe cap cameras and a little short bungee cord. I bought a, a pack of these little bungee cords at the hardware store. They're pretty handy for different size cameras. So any kind of miscellaneous small kind of camera it works pretty well on. And this is another way that it works pretty well is just use a rubber band and you can use these little film canister cameras on it if you don't want to use the magnetic mounting base method that I do with a metal plate and a magnet you can just use the little tiny tripod base for small cameras like this and uh, works pretty good. So Now this cigar box camera is probably a little too big for this mount uh, but again you could do something like that, a bigger one with rubber bands tied together connecting it. So it's pretty uh, flexible and this is one of the reasons why I've made different mounting plates in different sizes for different cameras. Well this is Joe Van Cleve and this is how you make little tripod bushings with T-nuts in blocks of wood. Well I hope this was valuable to you guys. If you're going to be building homemade cameras this is always an important thing to know how to do also. You only need a couple different kinds of drill bits, three different size drill bits. You don't necessarily need a drill press. You can do it with a hand drill with care. But I hope this was valuable to you and until next time have yourselves a great day and stay creative.